Borrowing costs reach a record high. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your hashtag not sponsored cheap coffee and let's get back into the swing of things by having a look at this article from SBS. Just, well, framing how much loans and borrowing costs uh, have increased because that uh, long-awaited-for property correction doesn't seem to have manifested in housing. Well, it's still bloody expensive. And... Well, I have not, uh, for those of you that have been asking and reaching out, you know, everything's fine. I haven't died. It's just been insanely busy. I've had a project where the time frame for construction changed from, you know, the holidays over Christmas to the holidays now for school holidays. So it's been a bit hectic for the last month, but I'm trying to get back back into the swing of uh, YouTube content creation. So let's check out this article, guys. Now, this is from SBS, and I wanted to look at this one because it's going to be useful in feeding into some follow-up videos I want to do, because, well, interest rates are going to well, are starting to go down. The RBA may be saying, no, 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 never, never, never. But the banks are whistling a different uh, tune. So home loan costs have reached a new high. Here's how much the average owner is borrowing. Now, remember, we used to have our Excel spreadsheet where we'd calculate the impact of interest rate changes, I wanted to, I need to read, I've lost it. I can't find where it is. I think I saved it on some OneDrive somewhere. Bloody new windows. And I want to get these figures to reconstruct it because if interest rates are going to change again, it's going to be important. So the average value of loans on owner-occupied homes has reached a new high according to the ABS. The latest ABS data on lending indicators shows that as of July 2024, the national average loan size for owner-occupied dwellings reached $641,000. $641,000, guys, for the average owner-occupier. Now, I mean, that's not completely an unreasonable amount, but the sad reality is most people are going to have to have both the husband and wife working. That's just what it is like these days. I was at a, we went on a camping trip with all the kids. It was a remote camp with a whole bunch of homeschooling families. So there were lots of kids there and it was a privately owned land that the farmer had set up for this. So the, you know, the boys could be running around sh- digging up and making mess. It, it was awesome. And it was interesting how many of the families there, are, you know, uh, making the sacrifice to have a uh, one income household. That's, uh, I'd say more common in homeschooling circles simply because well, a lot of you have, have to sacrifice a career to educate your kids. But you, you need to, well, you need to make quality of life changes. And that's going to be hard when you need to have $641,000 for a mortgage. So what's, what's the rule? You know, five times your income. So say as a couple, you're earning you know, together as a family 200 grand. Yeah, that's, that's not quite... That would be a comfortable loan then if you're earning 200 grand. What about 150? Yeah, what, one, two, 300, almost five times as a family? So remember when the media says, hey, you know, you need X, X, X times uh, wages to buy a house. That, that's old school thinking. You need to think from a household perspective. And nowadays, both people need to work. I'm not a fan of that. I don't agree with that. I think. Uh, the goal should be to have maximum parental time with the children, traditionally the mother. You know, let them spend time raising their kids, particularly in the first few years, and not slaving away to buy a house. That's the biggest sign, in, in, I would say, that quality of life between generations has decreased. But it ain't going to change. Look how much money they're chucking at childcare. It's a vote winner. So, in July 2023 was just over 593000 an increase of more than 8%. Yeah, property's gotten, gotten more expensive. We haven't had this huge correction. This figure includes the cost of construction, as well as the purchase of new dwellings and existing dwellings. So the size of loans for buyer, owner, occupier properties has increased across all states. In July 2023, the average loan to buy an owner, occupier home in New South Wales was under seven hundred and fifty grand. In July this year, it has gone past $780,000. 
Western Australia has experienced the highest increase in percentage terms. Well, yeah, that's probably because houses were a lot cheaper over in WA. The average home loan amount in WA has gone from 472000 to more than 550000 an increase of nearly 17%. There was a place just up the road here in my street where a couple bought a, a you know, old little specky home, which had, which they didn't realize, had the fake brick all around the bottom, you know, the, and full of asbestos. And they demolished it themselves. And what they did is they just dumped it all on the curb. So you can understand council ended up turning up the head, environmental um, protection people coming around. They had needed to identify where it actually went. They had to scrape the entire site for 100 mils of dirt it's because, well, they'd, they, they hadn't used any protection. They'd just demolished it. Now, sure, you can demolish a certain square meterage, and I'd suggest you look it up of asbestos yourself in Queensland when you do some online courses. I did it for my house. We had a little bit that I wasn't sure about. And the only way I could get rid of it was thanks to viewers of the channel here telling me to go down to Logan to the tip there where they'd take it away. And they wouldn't even touch it. They had a big, big, you know, backhoe come up and pick it up. And yeah, there you go. So... They, the reason I'm telling that story is the couple obviously, you know, had to spend a lot of money doing all this remediation and all this other work. And they kind of, I didn't realize it sold the house, half finished, half up on, on blocks. They bought it for 770 grand. They sold it for over, what, 970. Half finished house, half constructed, not livable. They're just paying for the land, aren't they? And the, someone else to come in and solve all the problems. So it just shows you how much property, even in my little area here, is going up, even for a half-finished place with a whole bunch of disasters. Maybe I'll have to do that. So there you go, guys. It's Property is not coming down. It's not getting cheap. I know everyone's there waiting on the sidelines, thinking, oh, it's unreasonable, it's unfair. They're saying, look at what a wage is and compare it to a purchase price. You, you're not thinking about the right figures. It's household now. Both you and the missus have to work, okay? If you're a couple, you both have to work. So you can see here the national is now 641. It was 593. New South Wales is up 780. How's Queensland? There you go, 600 grand pretty much. 600 grand. That's just the mortgage. That's not counting the deposit and the other costs. South Australia, 561. WA, 550. Tasmania, 443. And the Northern Territory and ACT, they don't have houses, oh, obviously. Meanwhile, the price increase in Tasmania is the lowest of all states at 2.3%. doesn't have data for NT and ACT. So the housing crisis. The conversation around Australia's housing affordability crisis continued this week with the head of Australia's first independent housing affordability body commented on the increasing difficulty of realising the Australian dream. Maybe we just get rid of these organisations. I hope they're not. Are they government funded? I hope not. Um, the National Housing Supply and Affordability Council chair said there's no silver bullet, no quick fix to solve the Australia, Australia's housing crisis. Well, perhaps we reduce the burden. Find all these little things that they create that our tax money get, get shipped to and then use that to slowly increase the tax-free threshold. I, I would suggest that, and this is not going to make housing more affordable, but housing's never going to be affordable. The challenge is getting a deposit to get into the house. Okay, don't, don't even think that housing will ever be affordable here in Australia. Okay, You go back to you look at the old footage. People have always been bitching and moaning about how expensive housing is. We've got a demographic now that are coming up that are very interventionist leaning, that, that think they can save the planet by paying taxes, you think housing's ever going to get cheaper with that lot becoming the majority? Not a chance in a million years. No, not a chance. The only way it will become more affordable is if we have a complete economic collapse. Then the average punter won't be able to buy a house anyway. And, oh. Australia's lowest income households can only afford 1% of houses sold, and the median income households now have to wait a decade to save enough for a deposit. Housing is not for the lowest income households. They're not going to be able to buy one. If you want to buy a house, you're going to have to earn more money. Okay, this isn't 
This isn't the, the 60s, the 50s, or the 70s when the government's just churning out large houses. Now you've got to jump through 50 million hoops, hoops to do any bloody thing on your own land. Why do you think people are turning to the tiny houses? Not because they want to live in a glorified caravan, but because they want to get around a lot of the, the rules and legislations that impact housing, which don't impact tiny houses or you know, caravans. Maybe rather than, than you know, denigrating what people are doing, we look at why they're doing it and adapting. We need to have a new type of housing under the, under the classification. I don't know. You know, one point tiny, smaller houses, and then you get around certain rules. Every year, legislation is driving up the cost of housing. It's not going to get any easier, guys. With many owner-occupiers struggling to buy a house, Australia's real estate market continues to attract more investors than those seeking to move into properties than buy, the ABS data said. Well, there you go, investors. Yeah, well, it, we've, I, I suspect the short glitch in the system during the last few years when owner-occupiers overtook investors is now being corrected. We're going back to normal. Compared to 12 months ago, investor loan approvals rose 5.4%, almost double that of owner-occupier loans of 29 Meanwhile, approvals for first-term buyer loans lagged far behind at only 0.8%. Investor loans went from $8.6 billion to 11.7. There you go, close to the record high. Mish Tanner, ABS head of finance statistics, says investors have continued to see the largest growth in new loans over the past year, increasing more than a third in value since July 2023. The increased investor activity we're seeing in the later lending statistics is more, mostly because more loans are being approved and is only partly driven by higher dwelling prices. Okay, that's interesting. That is interesting. Well, let's, let's have a bit of a chat about this one, guys. So there we go. Average... Mortgage sizes are increasing. Interesting. Well, we'll have to have a look at that, the impact that that's going to play on interest rate decreases that some of the banks are starting to push out. But the sad reality is housing isn't going to be more affordable. There's always going to be people that are complaining and whinging. There's always going to be entitled people that expect housing to be provided for them. The reality is... If you want to get into housing, you're going to have to earn more money to do it. And I'd argue that well, a lot of that is education and skills. And you need to prime your kids in that path. You don't want them to be a bloody neat bitching and moaning or someone dependent on the state expecting the government to hand them housing. You want them to get a trade or a good, a good qualification so they can actually demand some money for what they're doing. What they're doing is useful. Maybe that's a novel concept. Maybe that's why I'm all bloody boomer, hey? Anyway, guys, demi-boomer. I identify as a boomer. <laughs> Take care, guys. Have a great day. Sorry for the lack of content for the last 20, 20-something days. It has been very busy. Take care. See you next time.